so they'll do it to show dominance, much like when I was an L.A. cop. I worked the Los Angeles County Jail for several years. And I'll tell you, several times, uh, I, I, I would hear somebody yelling in, 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 a, in a jail cell, and we'd go over there, and we'd find somebody who was getting sodomized, or, or the act of sodomy, somebody being raped. And obviously, you know, we'd uh, pull them apart, and we'd file additional criminal charges on the inmate who was doing this. They were always bullies. They were always big, strong bullies that did this. And I would pull them aside and interview them. I'd say, okay, you know, you're gonna, I'm going to hit you with additional charges. We're going to file additional charges. With the, you're already here for armed robbery. You're looking at 10 years. Now you're going to get charged with felony sodomy, forcible sodomy. And then I would look at their, at their uh, booking slip, and I'd say, hey, so you're married? Uh, you got three or four kids, and here's a picture of your wife. She's beautiful. I'd say, why? Are you raping an 110-year-old blonde kid with blue eyes when you've got a beautiful wife and you've got a couple of kids? I said, you, are you homosexual? Every single convict would tell me, oh, no, they'd be insulted. They go, no way, officer, I'm not a homosexual. It just shows power. It shows dominance. When you take another man's clothes off and, and you rape him, it shows power and dominance, and that's what the jail's all about. But they'd walk right out of the jail, and they'd go into the arms of their beautiful, loving wife and a bunch of kids that, that were there to pick them up at the reception center where they would exit. In other words, none of these guys in the jail that were big, strong bullies, none of them saw themselves as homosexuals. But what inside the jail confines, because there's nothing but men, the whole Charles Darwin survival of the fittest attitude, it would like it would like swell up in them and they would try to to rape weaker, smaller men to show dominance and to get respect in the jail. This is much like Dr. Antonio Pardo from the Navarre University. He says whenever this happens in the animal kingdom, homosexual sex, it's for the same reason, to show dominance. Well so let's go to Anonymous in San Diego and if you'd like to join us, call us at eight 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 Five two six two one five. When if you agree or disagree, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to get Bishop Sheen's true meaning of Easter. That number's a little different. Eight seven seven five two six two one five one. Anonymous in San Diego. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Hey Terry and Jesse, how are you doing today? Good, good. How can we help you? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think this goes back to um, Dr. Kinsey mm -hmm. and this key report he had, the Alfred Kinsey report. Right. Well, and there was, there was a, I haven't read it yet, but there was a book called Making Gay Okay. Yeah. I guess that's a really good book. But, but what surprised me, you guys, is that um, I can't believe Exodus International closed down. I guess it was a product group, but I know they have courage and encourage. I know they have those groups. But what I'm thinking now is I'm, I'm 38 myself, and um, so what I noticed is that we've been bombarded by the media. The media is always infiltrated, but it's been more and more and more. And I think it's got, because when I was in the public schools in the 90s, they yeah. never talked about this stuff. But I think it's gotten, from what I heard, the Generation Y and the, the yeah. millennials have gotten really bad. But um, let me ask you guys this, because it was started with Kinsey, and basically it went through the, um, the, the, the media, and now the schools. But I guess the question is, um, what happened to Exodus International? Why the heck did, did he recant his clothes?